Morning. We are good morning to you. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at the business. It's uh, quarter past six on a Monday morning, which is time for uh, Morning Live Business. And uh, we also on Mondays try to look at some important books that are coming out. Now, when it comes to managing a business and staying competitive, the ability to anticipate the future and the trends that lead up to it can mean the difference between success and even bankruptcy. So what are the top trends that will shape South Africa and the world in the years set to come that we should be paying attention to? Well, political analyst and speaker Daniel Silk has written a book answering just that question. And that book is called Tracking the Future, Top Trends uh, That Will Shape South Africa and the World. Daniel Silk, a very good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Great to be with you. All right, Daniel, the world is moving at a pace. Is it really possible to spot the big trends that, that uh, will help us predict the future? Well, I think there are any number of influences that all of us face uh, on a daily basis, uh, whether it's in business, whether it's in our personal lives for that matter. And there are distinct trends that one can discern across the board. Uh, from uh, the rise of China and India, which seem fairly obvious, but the implications for us in South Africa are very real and very uh, interesting going down the line. The rise of technology, and we know how that influences our life on a daily basis. Uh, from the uh, rise of uh, urbanization, we're moving into an era with uh, the fastest uh, rate of urbanization ever in the history of humankind. Uh, from increases in population on the planet, yes, uh, these trends you certainly can identify fine we should be aware of them all all right now you've split your book up into eight big chapters we unfortunately can't deal with uh, all of them but let's track some of the trends that you see and how that might affect business uh, I'm intrigued by the first chapter people and the planet because I guess businesses are going to deal with people on the planet well, I suppose for business, probably the most positive trend in the book is the fact that we are moving into a high population environment. In other words, we are going to move from 7 billion people currently on the planet uh, to 9 billion people over the course of the next 40 years. Now, uh, to add 2 billion people onto the planet offers tremendous challenges for us all in terms of sustainability. But it also, if we can identify where those people are and whether they can be found in in high growth economies of this world, uh, it offers us a tremendous marketplace and identifying exactly where those population growth figures are going to be and their uh, future level of uh, consumerism into the future is a critical force for business. Uh, it really, to me, uh, offers one of the great trends, especially for us here in South Africa as well. All right, so you've got a chapter called Africa Comes of Age. I think we've discussed that quite a lot uh, on the program here as uh, one of the new emerging markets. But this chapter, Century of the City, tell us a bit more about that. Well, again, people are moving at a rapid rate from rural areas to urban cities across the world. And we see the rise of massive mega cities, or what we call panopoli, total cities across the world. Now, uh, this is perhaps uh, unheard of in a human existence since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the fact that millions of people every single month are leaving rural areas, moving to the urban areas, and there are new cities in the world. There's a city in China, and it's called Chongqing. It's often referred to as the <laughs> biggest city in the world that you may have never heard of. It's got 32 million people in it, and uh, many of us haven't heard of it. Now, the influence of such a major city with 32 million people uh, uh, receiving education, uh, developing developing liberal thought, being exposed to the outside world, moving into a business environment where they were once perhaps in rural environments. Uh, this is going to create a brand new set of demands for us and a great degree of competition globally between cities. Cities will be the competitive factor in future, perhaps more so than countries or the national state as we've gone used to over the All course right. of the last We're while. running out of time. Very briefly, I'm intrigued by what tomorrow's consumers are going to look like. Well, they're going to be tough consumers. For anybody in business, they're going to be discerning. They're going to have done their own research. They're going to be more aware than ever before, and that's thanks to the Internet. So consumers are going to be really the tough edge. They're not going to be easy sells anymore. You're going to have to disclose everything up front to a consumer, and if they don't like it, they're going to go elsewhere because their friends will have told them where to go through Facebook and Twitter. So for the consumer market, it's really going to be exciting, a very tough environment, and ultra-competitive. And perhaps that's the real message of the book. The future is ultra-competitive.
Daniel Silk, thank you very much for talking to us. That uh, was Daniel Silk, political analyst, uh, speaker, and also author with his book, uh, Tracking the Future, the Top Trends That Will uh, Shape South Africa and the World. Right, let's uh, take a look at your indicators now. And, uh,